This is about the position that unlocks absolutely everything. Just ask the number one defense in America about that. <laughs> that and everything we learned this week. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. You are locked on Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hi, I'm Stephen Willis, a former staff member at Ole Miss and a 10-year veteran of the national media um, with Yahoo Sports and also did a little time at WSMV as well. Today on the show, we talk about the Ole Miss tight end room finally being able to do the things that Lane Kiffin has asked for since 2020. Matt Corral and Jordan Tamu are about to dominate spring football, and it is baseball opening day, and by you looking at it, you can tell it's on the mind. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. We're free and available in all the podcast apps on on YouTube. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen every day and a special hello to the everydayers who make the show what it is. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers, join today and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. So we got a lot of interesting stuff that we're going to talk about today, and we're going to start with a tight end room. And I say that in the most lovingly of ways that I can. Caden Priestcorn in the Peach Bowl had an absolute, just an, a rival party. His, his announcement of himself being on the scene, he had 10 catches, 136 yards, and two touchdowns being a featured cog in Ole Miss's offense. Now, a lot of that comes from the fact that Penn State ran a bunch of high-risk zero coverage that they can get away with in the Big Ten because they don't have as many athletes going against them that can take advantage of that. Caden Priestcorn and Trey Harris absolutely decimated that defense. Priestcorn had three or four one-handed, like, sports center top ten level plays. In the course of the game, he had 10, like I said, he had 10 catches, 136 yards and two touchdowns. He also had a two point conversion catch as well in this game as Ole Miss just absolutely blew out Penn State all over Atlanta that day. He's going to be a major key and a major cog in Ole Miss's pass game. Now we talk about Trey Harris. We talk about Juice Wells. We talk about Jordan Watkins. You're not looking at a situation, I think, where it's going to look like it did when he was at Alabama and at USC to where Amari Cooper or Marquise Lee had like 120 catches. I don't think it's going to look necessarily like that. I think it's going to be an extreme version of what you saw a year ago in the past game to where the first, second, and third leading receivers were separated by two catches. It's 55, 54, and 353 catches for those top three players. So we'll see exactly how it looks. Now, I am fully expecting Trey Harris to be the alpha dog in this room, okay? And in the middle of the field, Mr. Reliable is Jordan Watkins. So what does that mean for a tight end? Well, after this announcement, this coming of age, this this announcement of your arrival onto the scene by Caden Priestcorn, it gives Lane Kiffin another toy to play with in his toolbox. Maybe you can have a situation to where this offense is so varied, you can essentially run three verticals and then the tight end goes in underneath and you have all those weapons and they can't ignore a single one of them. Caden Priestcorn is going to be a major cog in this offense moving forward. This offense is pretty much guaranteed to be unmanable. You're going to see a ton of zone defense. And if that happens, it's going to be a major key for a player like Caden Priestcorn because of his ability to post up in between zones. This offense is going to be athletic enough to where you can't just man them up. You're going to see Georgia try. You're going to see LSU try. You're probably going to see Oklahoma try to do it. I don't know if they can with the exception of maybe Georgia. Georgia's got the rivals 100 players all over the field. But the other 11 games on the schedule, I do not know if another team can man coverage this Ole Miss team, which makes the tight end position extremely important. Now, Last season, you had Caden Priestcorn, who missed like the first four games of the season. The LSU game was really his first true healthy game back. He played in the Alabama game as well. 
but the LSU game kind of was him announcing his arrival on the scene um, coming into the season, I should say. Ole Miss had a backup of Hudson Wolf, and they had um, Kyron Heath. Kyron Heath has since transferred to Southern Mississippi, so that left Caden Priest Corn and Hudson Wolf as a backup. And at the end of the year, that was that was fine. That was that was a good little setup that Ole Miss had. But Ole Miss went out to the transfer portal and got another tight end in Daquan Wright. He's a tight end out of Virginia Tech. He had 28 catches, 366 yards last year as a sophomore. He has somewhere in the ballpark. Um, of about 55 catches in his Virginia Tech career. He is going to be a junior on the scene at Ole Miss. He's a pass-catching tight end, but he does fit the mold more of a Caden Priestcorn than of a Kyron Heath. Um, he's not that Evan Ingram-type tight end position. He's more of an all-around guy, but he has very plus receiving skills. Now, you, are we going to see 12 personnel? Next season, with as talented as talented as the wide receiver room is going to be, as talented and as depth filled as the tight end room is going to be, are we going to see twelve personnel? Every dayers know that I've been calling for this for the better part of a year and a half. Twelve personnel and Lane Kiffin with Charlie Weiss Jr. ran some twelve personnel in 2019 at FAU when they had Harrison Bryant and John Rain. So we know that it is in the playbook. We know that they can do it. We know that is something that they like to do from time to time. Will they do it? The question is, who is the player that comes off the field? Who is Daquan Wright, the matchup problem for, that justifies playing him over, say, a Juice Wells or a Deion Smith or even a Jordan Watkins? Now, on the red zone and the goal line, yes, I can absolutely see a situation where 12 personnel becomes prevalent in the red zone. Whenever you want another big body in the game, maybe you go a Daquan Wright for Jordan Watkins. Or maybe you go a Daquan Wright for a Juice Wells. Something like that so you have bigger bodies to match up in the red zone. I do not know that Ole Miss fans are going to see that in the course of the regular field of play because of the talent that Jordan Watkins has, because of the talent that Juice Wells and Deion Smith has, because of the talent that Trey Harris has. I don't think you want a situation where you want to take them off the field, even for an athletic tight end like Daquan Wright. Now, if you're playing against a team that is really good in the secondary, but maybe you're a suspect in linebackers, maybe it's a matchup thing. Maybe it's a package thing that you do from time to time. But I think it is a situation to where Ole Miss is going to run mainly 11 personnel next season, and they're going to have Caden Priestcorn, who is the better, one of the better run-blocking tight ends that Ole Miss have ha has had in the last decade or so. And then you got Daquan Wright. If he can make the impact that we think he can make, out, make it, and Hudson Wolf as well, there's a chance you can see this tight end room at least expand to what – Alabama did with O.J. Howard, if you can remember that. that th I think that is the example of how Ole Miss is going to use the tight end um, this season. And I think that's the O.J. Howard thing to where he'll catch 30 to 50 balls. He'll do a lot of work in the ball um, blocking. He'll do a lot of the dirty work to spring open Trey Harris and Jordan Watkins and the other receivers. Um, so it will be a more effective thing, and it will open up more stuff but you might not see it in the numbers if that sounds familiar. Now, Ole Miss also has Javante Connor, the player that they signed in the 2023 class um, out of North Carolina and Alabama, and they signed Dylan Hip out of Arizona um, from, for, to play tight end as well. That's a five deep in the tight end room. I, I think that's important that you just start counting numbers and realizing what could happen. It is a five deep in the tight end room. I expect most of them to play. They don't redshirt anymore. You don't redshirt because if you redshirt people, they're going to leave in the portal and you're going to lose that year anyway. You need to get them on the field, keep them as happy as possible, and see exactly what happens. I mean, that's just the way it is in modern college football. And when you have a quarterback that this season is good and is hyped up as Jackson Dart, all of these weapons that are filling in around him, you can see exactly why the hype is there. Jackson Dart just needs to go out and play quarterback, and with these weapons, he's going to put up massive numbers. That's just the way this is going to work.
Thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen of the day. We are just getting started. Matt Corral signed with the Birmingham Stallions. Jordan Tamu is with the D.C. Defenders. And so how good was that 2018 passing offense at Ole Miss? Good grief. But they're about to take over some spring football. We'll talk about that in just a second. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and you know they have many, many more and different ways to bet on the game as well at FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Now, the tight end room, massive at Ole Miss. But, you know, in the past, if you want to think about tight ends, that 2018 Ole Miss football team, the the tight end on it, I believe, was Dawson Knox. He never caught a touchdown pass at Ole Miss. That's the famous Phil Longo joke. But Dawson Knox was a excellent soldier for Ole Miss, and I wish he would have gotten one of those touchdowns over the course of his career. His quarterbacks – um, Jordan Tamu and uh, I think Matt Corral. Matt Corral was a backup in 2018, so he at least threw passes to um, Dawson Knox in practice. Good grief. Think about that 2018 passing team. DK Metcalf, A.J. Brown, Demarcus Lodge, who, by the way, will be on the show on Sunday. Um, we'll talk to him a little bit. He's my favorite NWO wide receiver, even with those other two. Um, I'm a huge Demarcus Lodge fan. Dawson Knox. Quarterbacks Jordan Tamu and Matt Corral. And why do we mention those last two names? Well, both of those are surfacing in the UFL. Now, the UFL is the merger name of the XFL and the USFL. They came together. They cut off half of their teams, which I don't understand at all. And they took it back down to eight. Because whenever you start one of these spring football leagues or any league whatsoever, the hard part's getting to about 16 teams something that's sustainable. Whenever it's lower, it's hard to do. There's more matchups. There's less games. There's less inventory, and you're making less money. But if you can expand that out to where the number of teams is larger, it gets easier and easier and easier. Ask MLS what it's like building up and them having to actually contract and figure out a way to to make it work to take it off to the point where they're at, I think, 30 teams right now. The UFL is going to be a combination of the USFL and the XFL, just like I said. The USFL teams are the Michigan Panthers, the Memphis Showboats, and the Birmingham Stallions. The XFL teams of the Houston Roughnecks, D.C. Defenders, um, St. Louis Battlehawks, um, da- um, Arlington Renegades, and I believe Houston, uh, San Antonio Brahmas. So that's the five teams. There's three teams in Texas um, that were XFL teams that moved up. Now, Technically, the only thing moving up from the Houston Roughnecks is the brand, okay? Um, That's actually the Houston Gamblers moving up, but since they have a presence in the community already in Houston, they kept that franchise. But the reason I bring all of that up and all of that background is Matt Corral, the former draft pick of the Carolina Panthers, who was completely done dirty by that clown show of an organization. Um, even though they drafted Bryce Young and all that, but they were complete. Matt Corral was completely done dirty by them. Ended up signing with the Birmingham Stallions of the UFL. You look at the DC Defenders of the UFL. Looks like Jordan Tamu is coming back to that franchise as well. So that 2018 Ole Miss passing attack looks like it's going to be pretty well represented. Represented um, currently. So. Matt Corral coming back. I, th- I love this fit. Now, the Stallions are a pretty good team. I think um, 
I forget the quarters. Jamar something. I for a brain surgery moment flipped. Um, and Adrian Martinez are the quarterbacks that are on the roster. Matt Corral is going to have a little bit of competition. This is a two-time defending. I'm not going to say world champion, but cha USFL champion Birmingham Stallion going into this conglomeration with the XFL. Matt Corral season is going to be exciting. And, and Matt, if you're watching this, know that every single Ole Miss fan is looking forward to watching you play again. It, it's not, it's not even close. So go out there, ball out, put in the work, dominate that league, get back to the NFL because that's the key to this game. If you perform well in the UFL or USFL or XFL, whatever they're calling at the time, you'll probably get an invite to a camp. And with NFL teams pretty consistently looking for quarterbacks, you're always going to have that opportunity if you perform well. This is an opportunity for Matt to yo-yo down to the UFL, make a name for himself, and come back up. Similar to what A.J. McCarron has done over the last couple of years as well. But if Matt Corral can make it onto a, a roster, he can stick on that roster, you have a chance to kind of get set in the NFL in a way that maybe Chad Kelly was unable to do. So we'll see exactly how that goes. Now, Jordan Tamu, he's yo-yoed back and forth a little bit as well. He's pretty close to finding himself a home in these spring-type leagues. And, you know, D.C. defenders, they play at Audi Field or Audi Stadium, whatever they call it up in D.C. That's where on um, D.C. United the soccer team plays. It's an 18,000-seat stadium. I think it's perfect for spring football. The Birmingham Stallions play in the place where the UAB Blazers play. It's like 30,000. Again, a perfect situation for them. You got the Memphis Showboats and the Liberty Bowl. Less than perfect, but, you know, I understand exactly how it works. You know, the San Antonio Brahmas, they're in the Alamo Dome, like a lone tenant in the Alamo Dome. You've got the Arlington Renegades that play in the old Texas Rangers ballpark that was outside before they moved inside. Um, the Houston Roughnecks play in a smaller type stadium. I think they're going to play at Rice this year. So you can see how this works. And then you have the Michigan Panthers. They're going to try and play at Ford Field. So we'll see exactly how it goes. I, I'm excited about spring football. I enjoy spring football. The season kicks off like March 30th, about the time of baseball opening day. So people's minds might be split a little bit um, going in there. But if you're interested in Matt Corral, and if he wins that job, the Birmingham Stallions face the Arlington Renegades in the very first UFL game. So you'll get a nice debut early with that. Now, I expect them to expand quickly because of the reasons I talked about before. This is going to give other opportunities for borderline Ole Miss players to make it up onto the stage to get ready to get back to the NFL, to get into the NFL. This will be an avenue of that next step into the league. And I think that they're going to expand pretty quickly. There's already markets and ownerships and ideas in place. I think there you should look no further than like Seattle, um, New Jersey, Philadelphia, um, New Orleans, Tampa Bay, Orlando, those areas that have had a team in the past, it will be fairly easy for them to go back in there as well. I think they can they coalesce to try and regroup with a small number, and I think they're going to expand fairly quickly. I think they're going to jump up maybe to 12 next year, um, hopefully to 16 the year after that. Because I do think getting to 16 with these spring-type leagues, with these professional leagues, in a country the size of the U.S., that's the hard part. Getting up number of teams are the most important things. And it's scary to do. Believe me, it is. I understand that. Because if you're losing money at eight, what makes you think you're going to make money at 16? That's a giant leap of faith. But if you do that, there's a greater chance of making it at 16 than at 8. If you slowly try to work up, it can just go on and on and on to forever. But Matt Corral at Birmingham has a chance to completely reignite his career. Jordan Tamu, looking forward to him as well. DeMarquis Gates signed with the Birmingham Stallions as well. So I guess Ole Miss fans are kind of Birmingham Stallions fans at the moment. Sorry, Jordan, about that. Anyway. We have a lot more stuff to get to. Still more to come on the Lockdown Ole Miss podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. 
baseball opening day is upon us. And we tell you how to watch the game tonight from Hawaii and why I'm in a baseball frame of mind. With last minute killer deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. And all in prices that show your total up front, you know exactly what kind of a great deal you're getting before you check out. Buy tickets in a second with two taps, click, click. They're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it begins, seriously. And with zone deals, you can pick the section and Game Time will pick the seats for extra savings. And the Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section or row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Terms apply. Just download the Game Time app and use code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for $20 off your first purchase. Again, use code Locked On. That's all one word for $20 off your first purchase at game time. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen of the day and shout out to the everydayers. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every single league. For your second listen, go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 stream channel. Be part of history. Opening day is here, and Ole Miss baseball is going to begin tonight, well, almost tomorrow morning. Um, at Hawaii. They're playing a game at Hawaii. Now, the tip, the first pitch of the game, the Rebels begin their 2024 season on Friday when they face the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors in Honolulu. First pitch is slated for 1035 Central Time. That's 1135 Eastern Time, and the first game will be televised on ESPN+. Plus. So everybody can catch, well, everybody that wants to stay awake that long, can catch the first game of the season for the Ole Miss Rebels. I'm pretty fired up about what's going to happen, okay? I'm going to be predominantly a box score fan over the course of this weekend. I'm not about staying up to 3 o'clock in the morning for a regular season baseball game. I, I'm just not. So I will catch the back, the highlights. I will catch the um, score, the boxes, and all of that. We'll see exactly how it's going on. But we talked with Derek Vandy Griff. Heck, I guess that was Wednesday. It, um, we released it yesterday. And he talked about all of the newcomers that could perform exceptionally. He was extremely high on the pitching staff. He talked about the returners and all that as well. If you want to catch that, it's there. The baseball season preview is on the site, so I'm not going to go into it too much. But one thing that I am looking for forward to is seeing the left-handers that Ole Miss have, has acquired over the last year. Liam Dole, Austin Simmons, all of those guys, I'm expecting most of them to end up on the mound. I've heard different stuff all the time about how effective this pitching staff can be. Now, there's also quotes on Twitter. If you go on Twitter, if you go onto the Ole Miss baseball hub, for lack of a better word, you see a lot of people that, Desperately want Mike Bianco to hire a pitching coach specifically just because of various reasons. Now, I'm not worried overly about how it's going to look. These these are four games that I think Ole Miss should win all four. I think the score should be somewhere around nine to two in each game, and Ole Miss should come out of their trip to Hawaii four and oh. That's what I believe. Now, does college baseball always work like that? No, it, it doesn't. It, in fact, it rarely works like that. But if Ole Miss goes there and takes care of business, they get to enjoy a little bit of a reward to get ready for this season and all the hard work they put in the offseason. But Ole Miss probably needs to win the game. I am looking forward to see Austin Simmons in the game if he throws. 
He is on the trip. You can see this. This was posted in with Ole Miss baseball being tagged. He is counting down. That's a picture from Hawaii. It's absolutely beautiful down there. He is from South Florida, so palm trees are not foreign to him. He's probably that's probably why I took the um, picture to begin with because of him being homesick. But it should be interesting to see. It's always a great. It's got to be a great experience for all these college age kids to go down to Hawaii. If you just look at everything, if anybody's seen any movie on Hawaii, you can see that it's just an absolutely beautiful place. It's kind of on the ring of fire that's on those volcanic areas and all of that. There's so much to do in Hawaii. So if Ole Miss can get the win and all that, get their season off to the good point, get back to the um, Oxford, Mississippi, and we'll get ready for the season to really kick off because I'm sure, I'm absolutely certain that they're just hating that they're not taking batting practice in 23-degree weather. Uh, they're not taking batting practice in 40-degree weather. Now, they're probably going to have to deal with some of those in February, but it kind of is what it is. They're going to enjoy this trip as well. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. My surprise player that I think JT Quinn is going to look like a dominant Saturday-type starter or Friday-type starter, and I think Andrew Fisher is just going to rake. That is my prediction for opening weekend of Ole Miss baseball. Now, tomorrow, Ole Miss faces Missouri in men's basketball. What we learned from the basketball team on Tuesday is Kentucky, those guys, they played really hard. You want to see effort. Those Kentucky players played with a lot of effort because that was a true must win. We like to throw that term around so much in the media. This game's a must win. This game is a must win. Well, that game actually was a must win. That is what a real must win looks like. And you can feel it. You can't fake it. And Kentucky had lost three straight at home for the first time in 50 years. And they had Auburn in Neville Arena, which nobody wins there. Nobody beats them there. If Auburn played the SEC tournament in Neville Arena, they'd win. If they played the NCAA tournament in Neville Arena, they would likely win. Nobody wins there. So to get the win, if they would have dropped the game to Ole Miss to where it would have been four straight at home with Neville Arena, that is a season-defining win that LSU had. And like I said, you couldn't fake it. Now, Ole Miss plays Missouri twice. Ole Miss cannot lose to Missouri. Those have become real, honest-to-goodness, must-win games. After that, there's five games. If Ole Miss can go three and two against Mississippi State, South Carolina, Texas A&M, Georgia, and Alabama, go three and two in those games. You beat South Carolina at home. You beat A&M at home. That's two of the wins. You need to win one out of the three games of at Georgia, at Mississippi State, and Alabama. If you do all of that, you're probably fairly safely in the NCAA basketball tournament. But – if you drop one of those games and it gets hairy, it could mean the SEC tournament has become extremely valuable for Ole Miss. Ole Miss needs to go 5-2 and two to close out the season. They can do it. It won't be easy, but they can do it. We'll see how exactly it goes. This Missouri game, Saturday night, a completely must-win basketball game. And I'm not even making up and misusing that term. Thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen. Every day as we have DeMarcus Lodge this weekend, and basketball is needing to bounce back against Missouri as we may wait on the most anticipated football season at Ole Miss ever. You can hear about it every single bit of the way here. But for your second listen, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts, of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every single league. For your second listen, go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 stream channel. For those of you on YouTube, we'll send you there right now. Hotty toddy, everyone. Happy opening day.